I soldered up the boards. Um, when it comes to the crank motor, it's easier to just attach a long length uh, two core wire and just coil it up temporarily because that will run along the whole length of the device to the plug on the end. So just to keep it out of the way, we put it there. This is for the screen, so that's seven strands, three strands, two strands. This goes to the um, MIDI wireless socket, should you wish to use that. So that has three strands and they're all labelled on the back. The switches uh, clip into place and then you just solder them on the back. There's this panel which has the rather odd shape cutout. It goes there. These cutouts allow for the uh, protruding solder points. And then this one which I varnished earlier with some spray polyurethane varnish clear goes on there and you can see that the switches now protrude so they work. Um, you've got room here for the cable to come through and plug into here. This is for your large push button. This is for your rotary um, knob to adjust the sensitivity of the buzz. And then there are bolt holes. Um, they're not all bolt holes. These three are for the cover that goes over the teensy so you need to bolt now this together here here that's two three four five six seven eight the ones I'm using here are 12 mil and they go through fine and they give you just a little bit on the end to, to put a nut on without too much trouble and to save yourself time um, if you look up surgical forceps on uh, eBay for example um, the, or locking forceps you see they they have a ratchet here which locks together they're not very expensive they're fantastic for holding small nuts you can use an allen key but or hex key but these cheap hex screwdrivers are good as well you can see how much time it saves you you can just do it like that This stops them falling out when you turn it over to solder the pins. You notice when I stick this down I don't stretch the tape otherwise it'll pull these end ones in at an angle. Just keep the tape at its normal tension and just stick it gently down. Now, it's all assembled and soldered, okay, the next thing we're going to do is uh, bolt the this potentiometer, which will control where the buzz comes in as you're turning, bolt that through this hole here, okay, now, there's a nut, sorry, here we are, there's a nut that holds it on, there's a washer, we get rid of that. The thread here is actually quite long for a potentiometer. It needs to be that long to get through the two layers of wood on the front of the circuit board. Um, so this is sold actually for guitars. Some of them have a tab just here, just there, which you need to snap off. Otherwise it doesn't lie flat. Actually this batch, this batch doesn't. So that's great. So it should just go, let's get it in camera. It should fit straight through there like that which it does and there should be just enough thread 
protruding this side to do it up. Different type of locking forceps to just do this up, you know, reasonably tight, not super tight, otherwise you'll strip the threads. And then we're going to solder these three wires to these three tabs. Okay, wiring, following on from my little diagram here, this one here, the ground, so the middle wire goes to this one. Power, 3.3 volts, that one, left hand wire, goes to this one. Then the wiper goes to this one, pin 16. I actually put a resistor in here of about a thousand ohms. Um, I'm not quite sure whether the Teensy likes being fed um, the full voltage when the um, knob is turned all the way in one direction without any kind of limitation on the current. Um, I think it's actually okay, but I'm just being super safe. We've now got room to put the switch through, which goes like that. And then that is soldered to these two wires. It doesn't matter which way round they are. And you need a blob of glue on the back of the switch because it does have a habit of popping out. Okay, so that's the switch fixed. Uh, blob of glue there, and then we're done with that part of it. Right, the next thing we need to do is a test assembly. So I haven't glued any of this. Um, now you'll see, remember the base is 6mm thick, this panel is 3mm thick, so if you see something like that, see how it's projecting? It doesn't mean you need to shave it down, it means you've got this panel in upside down, because that tab is 6mm thick. So I can't do it with one hand, so I'll just stop the film and flip it over. Okay, right, I flip that over now you see. So you see these holes line up correctly, these little notches on the side for a wire to go through are both in line with each other. And the way this works, you see there's these little tiny holes here. They're just keyholes for a, a, a small um, screw. So basically this top plate goes on like that. Okay, that's the top. Um, you can stain that. Um, write on it, paint it, do whatever you like, and it's removable. So if you want to put something else on the top of the key box, something more ornate, um, it's actually up to you. It's, it's, uh, it's removable. This is tight bond. Um, squeezing a load out quite a generous amount. I've into the lid of a tub of cotton buds. Um, I'm going to use cotton buds because it seems to work for me. coat all the correct surfaces with glue make sure you get it on the right surfaces so we need to go on this edge here Right, I've made a mistake. See, I forgot this piece, so I need to get it in quick before it all sets. So, really get it in in time. Oh. That way, actually. No, oh god, what am I doing? Saved. This is not, this panel here isn't bent in, it's got to be flush with the edge, otherwise this one won't fit. 
I leave this rear panel off because basically I've got some more wiring to do here and so if it's all open to view it helps me a lot actually um, you could do it all through these holes in the top that's why they're there if, if a wire comes loose in the future you see you see I've thought about the design of this um, believe it or not if a wire comes loose in the future you can unscrew the top panel and you've got these access holes so you can reach in especially if you've got tools like these and reach in with your soldering iron whatever you need to do and fix it the back will go on like that then we'll insert the um, 3d print which goes here with the two sockets in it the two uh, midi sockets we've got the 3d printed end cap there's the multi-pin plug here although we only use two pins of the two of the pins um, which goes here these holes are for our battery tube so it's, it's all looking okay actually these are two spare bits of six mil thick ply so I'm just using them to spread the load and then I'm clamping them not really tight just moderately tight just squidging everything together obviously your table has to be level otherwise the whole thing is going to be curved when it sets but my table is pretty level okay let's give you a front view so we'll leave that set now before I start um, doing any more wiring up right it's all it's all glued together I've just test fitted this back panel to check that when the time comes to glue it in it will actually go in see it's not actually glued in at the moment so the next thing to do is start working on putting the um, the wiring through here do these two din sockets midi sockets which will be wired into that um, then we can get this panel on so that's half a meter long micro usb to full size usb cable Go through the hole there, that's a design fret, through the round hole, through the second round hole, bring it out, and you'll see how that the cable goes into these notches. Can you see that? Notch there, notch there, rectangular hole there. Now you see the cable is in the way of the, where the key stems will come. So we will actually need to bring it down to about there and glue it in place with hot glue like that to give it the actual take it the shortest possible run so that we get the maximum sticking out of the end here. So that'd probably be like something like that. See? You can see how I've taken this down here glued it along here so that's like a stress strain relief so we don't put too much pull on the socket here on the TNZ if this cable did get pulled at the other end and it goes through here and now you can see it comes under where the two key stems would run it then goes into this little groove here now you can see it's important don't push it all the way to the end of the groove otherwise it lifts it up too much and there's a risk you may interfere with the stem of this key so glue it into the groove just next to where the cylindrical battery holder would run so the cable almost touches the battery holder and the same with this one except I put even more glue round so if you look at it from the end you can see what I mean I haven't quite pushed it all the way out into the groove now this wire has got to run the full width also to this plug here and it's easier to run it up along here through this hole which is there for the purpose this hole which is there for the purpose and then across 